<laughs> okay, um, the Hawaii Culinary Education Foundation champions culinary education across the states with professionals and students through workshops and seminars like we're about to have. And uh, it's, it's my pleasure to introduce Haley Matson mathis who's the executive director of the Hawaii Culinary Education Foundation and partners with us to be able to bring exciting uh, education opportunities every semester to our student assembly. So, Haley. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be with you. I always look forward to coming to Leeward Community College. I think you have some of the finest instructors in the state and really a great program. So it's a pleasure to be here on behalf of the Hawaii Culinary Foundation. Our whole mission is really all of you. That's why we do fundraising. That's why we put together programming is because we believe in all of you as the next generation who are going to take the helm and make Hawaii an even greater food scene than it is or take it outside of Hawaii to wherever your careers lead you. Our whole mission though is to bring in experts and outstanding chefs who are some of the finest in their field and to bring in ingredients to you and to all the programs. Um, this week we will be in Hilo yesterday, tomorrow we'll be in Kona for a program there, and Maui, so we go to Kauai as well to do these classes, as well as high school mentoring, where we match professional working chefs, which we hope you'll do one day, mentor a high school uh, if you have the opportunity. Today, though, my pleasure is especially great because I get to introduce somebody who I respect and admire as not only a chef, but as a friend. Uh, chef Abigail Langless, I've known for as long as I've lived in Hawaii, which is going on 18 years now, and I have great admiration for her talent uh, in the field of pastry and her talent as a chef. Chef Abigail Langless has a, a very successful business here in Hawaii. You've probably heard of it, Cake Works. And we were talking earlier, I can't believe it, but it's been in business for nine years, so the time's gone by very, very quickly. And she's distinguished herself, uh, not just here in Hawaii, but for others who come to Hawaii for whatever it may be, special, fabulous occasions, whether you're having very exotic and beautiful cakes made for weddings or corporate events. And uh, admire the fact that she put this business together, but she has a background that's so rich in, in pastry and education that, that really goes with it. Uh, she's worked for um, Alan Wong and some signature restaurant, um, in a signature King Street restaurant, putting together the pastry program there when uh, when she was starting out in her career. And she worked, she's worked with some of the finest chefs uh, through the years, including some of those that were on the list that Don mentioned that are coming to the Food and Wine Festival, like Nancy Silverton. Uh, Abby's background, though, um, and her education was in Europe, where she studied advanced pastry in London. And I hope she'll tell you a little bit about that at Westminster uh, College, and then also her uh, beginning pastry degree there at the Diplôme Superior La Colle de Cuisine. And my French is uh, limited, but we'll, I'll let her correct me on that afterwards. She has worked with some of the finest pastry chefs in the world, and she's also mentored and brought up many who are coming up in the business. She's accompanied today as well with, by, uh, with Rebecca Mickey, who is joining her and will be assisting her. And Rebecca has education from Capilani Community College. So Abby hails from Hilo, so she's a local gal, and she can share with you what's the latest and what's happening in pastry. And I know that's something you're all interested in because I keep hearing about it on the evaluations that we give to you each time we do one of these programs. So without taking up any more of her time, I want my great pleasure to introduce Chef Abigail Langless. Um, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> um, we're going to do a little cake decorating today, and we're just going to do a few techniques that are pretty simple, but hopefully kind of fun. Um, and I'm going to show you some buttercream uh, designs, and then um, Rebecca's going to fondant a cake for you all and do a little airbrushing. 
And then I'm going to show you a little bit of piping. And then whoever wants to, um, you see we put these pieces of parchment up on the wall. So we're going to have some people go up and kind of practice some piping. Because the hardest thing is to pipe on the side of a cake. So that sort of mimics the same thing. But we'll have to do some simple things because we don't have a whole bunch of piping tips. But um, hopefully you'll, you'll join us and have a little fun with that. Um, We'll see. We don't have a refrigerator here, so we brought the cakes in a cooler. We'll see how they've held up in there, um, and we'll see how far we get with all the techniques we want to show you today. Um, <laughs> so um, I asked for it to be crumb coated, and um, and our other assistant <laughs> did such a great job that it's almost perfect, except for that the top of the box kind of messed it up a little bit. But that's okay because we're just gonna um, we're gonna do a couple techniques on here. We're gonna show you horizontal spatula marks. Um, has anybody does anybody know what that looks like? Okay, we're gonna show you. Um, one of the most popular things these days are naked cakes. We're not going to show you that because I think <laughs> that's kind of self-explanatory. The hardest thing about a naked cake is just actually um, cutting and filling it neatly. Um, and then, you know, there's sometimes a semi-naked. So if we were going to do semi-naked, we'd probably just scrape all this buttercream off. But that would be sad. So <laughs> um, oh, it stayed pretty hard. Okay. And then we're also going to show you how to stack a cake. Um, so this one is, looks so nice, but if, if, um, if we were going to do horizontal spatula marks, maybe we'll do that first, that's pretty easy. I've, um, you kind of get it to this stage, and then you put another layer of buttercream on. Um, and when you're doing this, when you're um, making your cake smooth, that is sometimes the hardest technique to learn, actually. Um, the way we do it is we just kind of uh, throw a thin layer on the cake. So the first layer would be the crumb coat or the dirty icing, as Cake Boss likes to say. Um, and you just don't want to take a whole lot of time with it because then you're just taking the buttercream on and off the cake. So the whole idea is, you know, get the layer on, get it in the freezer, get it hard, put another layer on. Um, so we're just putting another layer on this one so that we can um, we have something to work with for the texture. I don't know why it's doing that. So with um, horizontal spatula marks, it's really simple. You get it to that point, and then you can kind of just go right around the cake. So this is something, you know, everyone says, oh, we want just something simple and elegant or rustic. And this is really pretty easy. It's probably easier than having a smooth <coughs> coat of buttercream. So let's say your friend wants you to make a wedding cake for her. And you can't get your buttercream smooth. That's okay because you know this nice horizontal spatula mark technique. And um, with a, some fresh flowers, it's going to look really pretty. Um, so that's one look. Um, now I'm going to take that off. Okay, so the other one that people like a lot right now, which is also pretty simple and rustic looking, is what we like to call the old-fashioned look or the spackle look, which is harder than it seems when you're first doing it because it's just it kind of it looks kind of like the frosting on the Duck and Hines frosting or the, you know, and so you're just kind of. Um, But when you're first doing it, you're like, oh, is it too perfect? Is it too messy? <laughs> you're like, this just feels wrong cause, because I should be working harder. <laughs> 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 but
but it's just supposed to so you know if you're having a hard time getting a nice smooth surface there's other things you can do in the beginning when you're just learning how to make cakes and it'll still look nice and people will think you spent all day at it and sometimes this can be like bigger you know or you know the hard part is you don't want it to look too perfect so you don't want them all to be like well you might that's a look too just depends how you want it you know you could have it like that you could have it spaced more and sometimes they have them bigger okay but we're gonna take that off too <laughs> Um, and so, um, so we did the horizontal, right? And you can also do the vertical. And just, you just have to go around, or it'll come around to you in a minute. You just want to kind of evenly space it. So how many of you think you could do that, any of those techniques? Pretty easy, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes? <laughs> OK. Now we're going to smooth that off again. <laughs> um, how many of you have seen those ruffle cakes? Have you seen ruffle cakes? Yeah. Some, some of them are with fondant ruffles, right? But there's also really simple buttercream ruffles. So um, we are going to do some buttercream ruffles here. So you just need it chrome coated. I mean, you can kind of see some of the cake here. That's fine for this. Um, we have a nice um, rose tip. Yeah. I'm going to try and do it this way so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Yeah, you can see up there. All right. Can you see the back? Not really. OK. Let me start from the top. You can start from the top or the bottom, but I start at the top. You start at the top? Depends on the direction it's going. <laughs> okay. So there's different ways. It depends how roughly you want it. So you're just slightly moving this up and down. Um, there's different looks. You might want it straighter. So if I'm going faster, it gets more like that. If I go slower, it's spaced out a little more. And you could color this, or ombre is also really popular right now. It's still popular. So you could, um, you could start with a couple white ones here and then um, change your buttercream to like a light blue or light pink. Do a couple in those colors as you go down and then just get, you know, increasingly darker. Abby, did you learn all of this on the job? Or? Yeah, pretty much. And looking at pictures and figuring it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and also, these days, um, I learn a lot from Becky, because she's actually in the deco room a lot more than I am. I'm sort of running the business a lot more now. So 
Becky started with me as an intern um, from KCC, and she just never left, which I'm <laughs> grateful for. <laughs> no, she's, she's great. She's really become my head decorator, and, um, um, and does amazing work. So there's a, a dinosaur. She's really good at the gum paste figurines and stuff. There's a dinosaur on our Instagram, a Jurassic Park cake. So if you look at our Instagram, um, cakeworks underscore hi, um, there's a great raptor. raptor. <laughs> One dinosaur is one. Yeah, that she did. And you should look at the technique on the skin. It's really cool. She can explain. <laughs> or I can explain for you. <laughs> she can tell me and I can explain to you how she did it. But it's really cool. Yeah. So do you all know how to make these cones, paper cones? <laughs> yes, has, has Chef taught you? <laughs> so also when we're, oh, can you pass me the fondant? Bucket. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. When when you're decorating cakes too, it helps if they're up where you can actually see it. Because if it's too far down, often I'll see people decorating <laughs> cakes and it'll be like down there where I started. And it's really hard. Or sometimes we'll, you know, have to sit on, we'll sit on a stool so we'll be at the right height if we're piping on a cake. Usually I'd probably have a big, bigger um, piping bag than this, but. So, um, how many people have tried to pipe on the side of a cake? Is it hard? Yes. Yeah. Takes practice, right? It's easy to pipe on top of the cake. Yeah. That's why I have the parchment up on the wall. But it just takes practice, it gets easier. Some people like their ruffles neater, but I kind of like them a little bit messy. Not messy, but I don't want them perfect. I want it to be, I want to see the movement. I don't want it to be a perfect. It just depends on the look you're going for. So I'm just going to get this cake ready for stacking and then we're going to do the second tier. And I'm not sure they're going to go together because I'm going to do a different technique on the second tier, but that's okay. Thanks. So um, when we usually use these bubble straws, um, they usually work very well unless you're doing a really super tall cake, but we'll, we'll stack a three tier with the bubble straws. And this is an eight inch cake and I'm gonna stack a six inch on top of it. So I use six, it might be a little overkill, but I'd rather have it be overkill than have my cake fall down. Um, make sure you do the flat side, <laughs> not the pokey side down. <laughs> um, And this is kind of the wrong way. Don't do it this way. Make all your straws the same height. <laughs> so usually we'll poke a skewer in into the cake, mark where, where it is supposed to be, and then cut the straws all the same. Make sure they're all. If you do it this way, I, for a two tier it's probably fine. But if you're going higher than that, you, you might have a lopsided cake. 
because you'd be surprised. You think these are all the same height, but maybe the top of your cake is not flat. So one side might be um, shorter than the other side. So I can tell I already cut these wrong. So, so especially if you're going over a two-tier, don't do it this way. <laughs> okay. So then, this is the scary part, right? <laughs> you just kind of see it. So, um, okay, nice sharp skewer. These are just bamboo skewers that I get on Amazon, but they're really heavy duty. Um, and I'm a little bit off, that, you know, but what I do is if I stick this in, I can kind of judge it over. That's a culinary term, judge. <laughs> okay. And then just poke it in. We have a, um, we have a little hammer we use um, at the shop, but we're going to try. And we also have, like, um, clippers. But we didn't want to take them away because somebody's making cakes there. So we have a better. We have like bush clippers that we use. Yeah. Okay. Um, and if it's a really big cake, we might put more than one skewer in there. But usually for these two tiers, two or three tiers, we'll just put one skewer. That should be enough. Um, yeah. Does it feel stable? Yeah, it seems pretty stable. Okay. Then this is a technique that I think looks so cool. Um, it's not super popular, but I think it would be fun for a birthday cake. So, and it's like kind of hard to figure. Well, you can figure everything out on YouTube these days, right? The only awkward bit is when you get to the end. So the reason, um, I mean, you could do this separately and then stack your cake, but then when you move the cake, there's always like a little, you know, place where you kind of damage it when you stack it, which is why it's really hard to do a cake without a border. Um, but by doing this, I don't have to border it because I'm doing it directly on the cake. But, but if you were going to decorate this second tier before you stacked, you would definitely refrigerate it, get it hard. It's just like a little bit, you know, that stays on your spatula. You don't want to get onto your ball. So this too, although it would be painful, is you could do it in an ombre, but then you'd have to have like five piping bags. Okay, so you get the gist, right? <laughs> I have to do the whole one. Okay, so now I'm going to let Becky fondant the other cake. If I have time, I'll show you some fondant roses on the next cake. I'm uh, not fondant, um, icing roses. Yeah, buttercream. Just move. I started, I started, um, I started baking when I was eight. <laughs> um, I always loved to bake, but probably I, it's just because I had a really big sweet tooth and I like to eat it. 
Um, and also living in Hilo, my mother baked a lot. Um, you know, there wasn't like a lot of places to go buy a lot of sweet stuff. So if we wanted it, she would just say, hey, let's just try it out. I remember um, one time she's like, let's make truffles. And we just didn't work out very well because we didn't know how to temper chocolate, but, um, but they tasted great. Um, she would do things like make chocolate leaves and stuff, which, you know, um, I, I thought was amazing. Yeah. And, um, and you know, I, start, I, I decided I should go to regular um, school, university, and I started out as a biology major, but I wasn't real happy doing that. So I thought I better try culinary. My mother gave me a book on cooking schools around the world, and I um, picked one that was in England because um, it had a six-month externship program that they would put you in after, after your nine-month course. So um, I got to do my stage at the Four Seasons Inn on the Park in London, and I was lucky enough that they um, gave me a work exchange visa, so I got to stay there. And then while I was there, I got to go to advanced pastry at Westminster College. Um, and then I got married and moved to France and got to work there for three years. So I've been extremely lucky in the start of my career. Mm -hmm. But then there's no place like home. <laughs> and um, so I had to move home. Yeah. And when I got home, I, was so, um, I, was, I started my culinary career in Hawaii at uh, Alan Wong's restaurant, which was great because at that time we got to do he just pushed us to do specials and do be creative and do all kinds of things, which was really wonderful because I had a really good base. So at that point, I got to you know try out all these things I knew how to do somewhere. So Becky is is um, kneading the fondant, and you can over knead fondant, but it takes a little while. <laughs> um, we used to make our own fondant, but. Um, <laughs> That was a pain. <laughs> it wasn't the same. It wasn't consistent. Uh, I'm not sure if it's our baker, Everett, um, and maybe he didn't like making the fondant, so uh, he never made it the same every time. But um, we decided finally that wasn't worth it because sometimes it was so stretchy or too soft. So now we buy our fondant. What is it made out of? It's made out of powdered sugar, gum tragacanth, corn syrup, gelatin. That's about it, yeah. There might, there's probably some preservatives in the one we get, the Fondex. Um, we like this brand. It's easy to use. It's cheap. Um, we can roll it really thin. Um, customers don't like a real thick fondant. Um, and so it's pretty good. Sometimes when you have, has anybody tried using fondant here? Did you have a good experience? like Play-Doh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have to, um, I mean, you have to work a little bit fast with it, but but you can also take your time. You don't want to um, be impatient. Um, and sometimes you get little bubbles in that. We're not going to wor worry about it. There's not too many, but you can poke those with a pin. Um, so you're using your forearms and stuff. This is a French rolling pin. The reason we like that Actually, um, Becky has a little bit of carpal tunnel, so usually at the shop she'll use the regular one, and then she'll pick this one up to roll her fondant on to put it on the cake um, if she's doing a lot of fondant. Um, I mean, what's the advantages of using the fondant or the Well, there's, it's. Partly personal choice. I mean, I, ha I, I, ha I do all the consultations at the shop, so a lot of people will be like, oh, I don't like fondant. But sometimes there's just things you can't do uh, with, the font with the buttercream. Yeah? And people like that finish. Um, do you flavor the fondant? It has a vanilla. F this one has a vanilla flavor. Um, yeah, you can flavor it with other things as long as they're not going to change the color. But we don't generally. We just try to flavor what's inside the cake. Um, um, the other thing I was going to tell you, so there's quite a bit of powdered sugar here on this side. We try not to put too much powdered sugar on the top because that tends to dry it out. So when you are, this is, oh, this is discolored like that because this is actually a piece of styrofoam. <laughs> but we've chrome coated the styrofoam, yeah. 
um, partly because when you're working with the fondant, you want that buttercream to be hard. Um, so usually we take it out of the fridge, and it's nice and hard by the time we're putting the fondant on. Um, we didn't know how cold our cooler was going to keep it. So, yeah. so she see she's, yeah, start with the edge. So you want to um, smooth the top out and then attach it on the top. If you don't attach it around the top first and you start pulling, it'll, it'll kind of pull it too thin. Um, and you see how wide she has it here? as she's smoothing it down. This is the part you can kind of take your time at. After you've attached it to the top, you can, don't be in too much of a rush because you've got to get those pleats out. So she kind of pulls and, 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 and gets the pleats out. So it's better to have more than you need. If you have just enough, it's really hard because it's just, you know, it wants to just pleat up around the, gather around the bottom. Mm -hmm. And. Well, that's a good question. <laughs> sometimes better and sometimes worse than the buttercream. Um, you know, recently we had, you know, when it's really humid, sometimes it'll make these bubbles that bulge out, and they're horrible. And I, I still don't know, you know, we were researching again just this week, like how, how to get rid of those bubbles or, or how to keep them from forming. And they don't, you know, they form sometimes when we're, we have a lot of decorations to do on the outside of the cakes or... Um, and it's sitting out there a long time, but sometimes you're not working a lot on the cake, and then it'll get to the event, and then the bubble will form, and you're like, yeah, that's the worst thing. Uh, the other thing is sometimes it's so humid that, um, like if we have stencils, like sometimes we have royal icing stencils or something, um, they will, we don't do that anymore. We use buttercream because they will ru run down the cake. <laughs> like the condensation, I, I remember taking um, at the Halikoa, they have an outside venue, and there had just been a thunderstorm, and then the sun came out, and I set up the cake, and so it was super humid and hot and horrible. And um, it was fine. I set it up fine. I got a call when I got back. I was back at the bakery wait, 20 minutes later. Our turtles are running down the cake. <laughs> So I ran back. I was there cleaning them up with my little Q-tip. But um, <laughs> yeah, so but sometimes it's better because the fondant will, you know, I, it's not so much the heat that's a problem for the fondant. The, the fondant ha handles better heat than the buttercream. But the humidity is a problem, yeah, and people don't like to cut it. So it sort of depends what you're doing and where it's going. But you can't always tell here in Hawaii, right? We don't know. We don't know. There's, we haven't too often had it. But every once in a while, the humidity levels are just so horrible that we'll even call the person and say, you know, we just don't think this is a good idea. But usually it's fine. <laughs> that was one of the worst. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. First, okay, so Becky ha now has her nice fondant cake. Did you see what she did at the bottom? She kind of thinned it out and then just cut it right around, so she made a really nice um, smooth edge there. Um, so after you do the top and everything and you smooth out the gathers, you know, you have the fondant smoother, smoother <laughs> that she kind of did that with. Now she's going to airbrush some gold on here. Gold is also something, metallics in general right now are very popular. So we're just going to do something simple. Um, and then she's going to airbrush that sugar peony for you all, which we actually didn't make. <laughs> um, <laughs> so full disclosure, you can get these beautiful sugar flowers now. Um, that So we, we pr probably pretty much make stuff that we can't buy because people don't really want to pay for us to make them. Um, because it would cost a lot more. Yeah. So, okay, one of my biggest challenges <laughs> was, oh, you need, oh, yeah. Is that okay? Or, um, is that the airbrush? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I got um, I got a phone call from um, 
Bronwyn Weber, who's a cake artist on the mainland, and she was making a cake for somebody here, and she wasn't going to be able to travel with her cake. Now, I've never traveled with, I've never done a cake for somewhere else or shipped a cake, but she ships cakes a lot. But she said she wasn't able to come, and so she thought, and her, she was going to send her husband with a cake, but she just wanted somebody here in case of emergency or something got damaged who could fix the cake. So I have her book. It's an amazing book. And I was, like, very honored. So I was like, yeah, sure, that would be great. I hope I, hope I get to fix a border and see her cake, you know? So I get a phone call the weekend that her cake's supposed to arrive, and her husband calls me, and he's freaking out. He's like, I don't know what happened, but I think they dropped the cake. And I think this is, actually, I think this is a, ho I, I think he's joking. I, I don't even think he's for real. And then I realized, no, he is for real. And I'm, so I'm like, well, you, you better just come straight to the bakery. You know, the, uh, the, cake, the cake is not for the next day, but it's for the day after. So I said, well, come straight to the bakery. We'll see if I can salvage anything. Because I don't know at this point what it looks like. He comes to the bakery. There's nothing salvageable in the box. <laughs> they had, it was, it was interesting to see how they ship these things, but somebody must have dropped that crate. So they had a crate. They had the different tiers doweled into the bottom. They had a thing on the top going into the dowel so that the cake tiers hopefully wouldn't shift or anything, but somebody must have dropped that crate. Um, and so I said, well, okay, um, we'll just get started now. <laughs> and um, I had our other employee, Jolie, she baked the cake for me. Um, and we couldn't really do anything till the next day because this cake was carved. So we had to let those cake tears chill. So I think we filled it, put it together, left it overnight. The next day, we ca I carved it. We put it together. And it had a lot of um, piping on it, which then had to be painted gold. And this is a five-tier cake. <laughs> um, but everybody rallied around. I think Marlene was there, too. Were you on vacation? I, I think you so. You must I have been on vacation. Because I remember hearing about it right. after the fact. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and we all, and, and even her husband, you know, he's like, I'll help. <laughs> and he's, you know, he's not a cake decorator, but he was there with his little paintbrush. <laughs> And um, he had the hardest time because he felt like we should tell the bride. And I said, no, you know, let's not tell her anything. She thinks she has a Bronwyn Weber, you know, cake. We're just going to let her think that. And, um, and, and we did. And she was so happy with, and he was happy. Actually, Bronwyn was, ha uh, she was happy with her cake too. Uh, you know, we sent her pictures. She had talked to me during, she had an operation. That's why she couldn't come with her cake. She, she had to go in for an operation. And she, she was talking to me in the middle of it, going, you know, if you need to simplify the design, you can. <laughs> and I said, you know, just let me do it. <laughs> and, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure I can do it. And um, she was happy with, the pit, happy with it afterwards, um, which I'm glad. Um, and a few months later, they told the bride what happened. And, um, and she came and gave me a really nice thank you gift, which was nice. But that was, it was... Your adrenaline gets going, and you're like, okay, I'm just going to make this happen. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it was a really big. Now I wish I had a picture. <laughs> that was on my other camera. Okay, so that's just sort of like a gold ombre, um, which you could do with a different color, too. Um, yeah, and then she's going to pink ombre the, the peony. Um, have you guys done much airbrushing? Mm -hmm. No. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And a little bit more. So we use um, airbrush colors and vodka most of the time, and then sometimes luster dust in the in the vodka. The vodka is cheap. We buy the cheapest vodka from Sam's Club, Kharkov, that you wouldn't want to drink. <laughs> and um, 
and it, it dries well. Um, some people use Everclear. We had a bottle of that, but it disappeared. <laughs> so now I just buy the Kharkov and nobody drinks it. <laughs> um, Right, because if you just used water, it wouldn't dry, you know, the alcohol evaporates. Yeah, so whenever we do anything on the cakes, we use the alcohol base. Um, mm -hmm. so, sometimes you, sometimes if you want a subtler look, you could use a powder and brush it on, which is nice too, it's just a different look. Um, but if you're doing a lot of flowers, it's really, the airbrush is really nice. Yeah, I would say. I mean, we do other fancy things like fancy cupcakes and cake pots and desserts. Um, but, well, birthday cakes and wedding cakes and, yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess the other biggest challenge when I was kind of, before Becky was there, when I hadn't been, had my shop very long, we did a five foot pink Cadillac convertible. <laughs> And um, A, I hadn't done anything that big. And, and it was a car, and it was a convertible. <laughs> so you had to do the seats and figure that out. You know, you had to get the spec, I think I got the specs online and just, you know, made them smaller, because you can actually find all that stuff. Um, you can find a lot more stuff now online. Um, you can find, like, edible images for, um, for logos for the cars, what is the cars cake called? Uh, Lightning, McQueen. Lightning McQueen. You can find all those decals and stuff made, you know, that you can just print out on your edible images and stick on your your car, because somebody's done it already. Um, So, so yeah, she's moving farther away from it to get the lighter color, and she goes closer in when she wants a darker, more intense color. Part of it with the airbrush is you can, if you pull more, push more, more comes out, but sometimes you have to actually be further away. Um, so it takes a little practice. It's good to kind of practice on a piece of parchment um, just to get your distance and intensity well. Um, I mean, some people, like people who do airbrushing, airbrush art and stuff, like on cars and things, they have really, really good airbrushes that you can actually draw with. We probably don't do that kind of work on our cakes, but some people are real artists with airbrush. You can get really good at that. If we're painting on a cake, we're usually hand painting, so. And then um, oftentimes if we have something like this, because of the humidity here, we, if we make any gum paste or if we've airbrushed a bunch of flowers, we actually have a de, uh, de dehydrator that we'll put the flowers in to dry them out. Um, yeah. So these petals are all on different wires. Um, so if you were going to make this flower, you'd make each of these petals, attach it to a wire, and then, um, and then wire it together. Yeah. Are you going to do the thing? <laughs> Here. Because it's styrofoam, if it was real cake, we could just stick it in. This is something else that's popular, is sort of having the cake on the side, or having a corsage sort of here at the corner. <laughs> I'm screwing it in. <laughs> um, or if you have a two tier, sort of like here on the side. Um, okay, it'll cover it up. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Okay. 
you want to use this to? <laughs> Whereas before, always you'd see flowers just on the top or as a cascade. So this might be a nice, simple birthday cake. You know, you'd probably put happy birthday somewhere. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. I have one more cake, right? Yes, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. So... I'm just going to show you some scroll work and some, well, we're going to try a little bit of drape, like drop string drapes as well. Um, so it's easier when you have a tip, but if you don't have a tip, you can just cut, you know, a small hole in your parchment. Um, you guys got your recipes, right? So um, the American icing is the one I've been using. Um, does it say Ameri Does it call it American icing? What does it say? You have French buttercream and you have... Yeah. So the French buttercream is what you had on your cupcake that you ate. And um, that's what we use for all our fillings. Um, the American buttercream we use on the outside of the cakes. If, if we use the French on the outside, they tend to um, sometimes crack during transport. Um, you'll have fissures. It's just not pretty. It tastes a lot better, but for decorations, the American holds up way better. So string piping. We'll see how this is. I didn't – usually um, what we'll do is we'll kind of mix the bubbles out a little bit because see how, bu how, how many bubbles are in this? Can you see that? No. I don't know if you can see it or not. Um, so when you're doing string drapes, string piping, it helps um, to sort of try to mix those bubbles out a little bit with a spoon in a bowl. We'll just see how it goes, how it does. So I attached it, and then I attach it again. But sometimes when you have a lot of bubbles, it'll break. But it's doing all right. I did mix it a little bit. But if you're having trouble, um, the thing to do is try and do that a little more. The other thing is when you get more sure of yourself, you'll go faster. When you go faster, you tend to have less problems. So it's just about practice. But this is something if anybody wants to give it a try on the wall. We might have to clean the floor after. <laughs> so then I'm going to do another little one in between. So anyway, this buttercream recipe is really good. Some of them aren't stiff enough. It has butter as well as shortening, so it still has some flavor. Um, the butter gives it flavor, but the shortening helps it stand up you know, for piping, different decorations. Um, if you beat it too much, it'll get, when you mix it, it'll, um, it'll get too slack. Or it'll, actually, if you don't beat it enough, it's slack. If you beat it too much, it's going to have too many air bubbles. Um, okay, and we can just give it another little thing, little loop here. Sometimes people do this with royal because it's easier. Um, the royal, it's easier to do string work with royal. This is just a little bit of string work. It's not a lot of string work. And then you maybe do a little, just finish it.
Okay. Let's see. Can I have the fondant bucket? So I'm going to show you some scroll work. I'm just going to do it underneath this. And then, um, and then we'll finish it up with a pearl border, which is actually a technique that, that is really good to know. It takes a little while to make a nice pearl border. Um, but the scroll work also is just hard when you first learn because it's a lot of free handing. And so when you get better at it, it'll go a lot more smoothly as well. So some of these things you just have to, um, or even if you've, if you've done things like this, like on a plate to make your plate pretty with chocolate or something, uh, when you're plating desserts, it's good to kind of learn some of these things and just memorize them. Um, some of these curly cues, you can find them in books and stuff too, like, or just follow something else. But you kind of have to just memorize a few of them and keep doing them so they come natural. So you don't have to think about it. Because if you're thinking about it when you're trying to do it, then you go too slow. And then um, they don't come out nice. And when you're doing it on buttercream, if you're doing it on fondant, you can wipe it off. Um, that's what's nice about piping on fondant. Just keep going till you don't till you till you like it. <laughs> Sometimes you don't like it. <laughs> That's okay. Okay, so pearl border or a snail trail. Um, the objective is just to have perfect little balls, right? And so I like to hold it out a little bit away from where I want the ball to form. And then I pull in so that you can cover up the tail. And you could have a bigger one. You know, if you had a bigger cake or birthday cake, you could make a bigger one. Um, it's similar to a star tip shell border. But this has sort of a more contemporary look, you know. Star tip always looks like grocery store to me. Um, and for a wedding cake, you know, that's kind of bulky. So it's a little more elegant. But this takes practice. If you just do it a lot, you get good at it. Sometimes I see people doing it like this, but it's really hard to get the tail off. Um, so I try to teach them to do it like this. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. Can you see? Mm. 
Let me exact. When I don't go fast, I <laughs> it's harder. <laughs> So that's, yeah, it's a good technique to learn. Okay. okay, I'm just gonna use my same ruffle tip. Here. Anybody done roses? No? I probably need more buttercream, but let me just start. Sometimes they have you, um, you know, use a different tip to do your base, but who has time for that? So <laughs> do you? Okay. So you try and do three in the middle, and then sometimes they tell you, yeah, five and then seven. I don't worry about that. I do three in the center, and then you have to. It's really the angle of your of your tip. Um, you start in more and then you come out as you go down. And I just keep going till it looks okay. I'm going to show you plumeria. <laughs> Normally with the plumeria, I would stripe the bag with some yellow. Um, but I'm, we're not doing that here. I guess I could put a little pink in there. But no. So if you stripe the bag with yellow, just down one side with a paintbrush, and then the fat part of your rose tip, you put towards that yellow stripe, that will make the center of your plumeria um, yellow or pink or whatever you decide to stripe your bag with. I'm getting messy. Okay. So with the plumeria, you need to um, get better out. build a base as well. And then you have to do something that I call sort of a an S. Oh, that one didn't come out good. But it's the hard part is just getting used to um, spacing them out well. It looks better when you have the yellow. But it's okay. If you spa you know spacing your petals out well because often you'll get to the end and you'll be like, oh, there's not enough room or there's too much room and I need six petals and really your plumeria needs to have five petals. Yeah. Well, okay, now it's your guys' turn. So who wants to practice on the wall? <laughs> okay, come on up, come on up. <laughs> 